The pheasant tail nymph may be the dearest uh, fly to a nymph fisherman's heart, and that's why we chose it for the first month's uh, fly of the month for the Allen Brothers. We've taken the pattern over the years and added our own twists to it. The uh, part partridge soft tackle collar, a tungsten bead, and a few other uh, features that make it a little more durable. And it's by far one of our most favorite patterns, and we think if you learn to tie it well and fish it well, that it'll become one of yours. Let's get started by uh, taking the bead that was supplied and um, hitting it near the hook here. What we're going to do is thread it on. If you notice, there's a small, small, small hole um, on one side and then a bigger hole on the other side. What you want to do is put the small hole into the um, point of the hook into the small hole. That'll thread it so that you have the back side of that hook or of the bead should be concave and that's where our materials, materials will tuck at the end of the uh, fly when we're finishing it up. Okay, I'm going to place the hook in the vise next securely. Make sure you get enough of the bend in there to hold it nice so it can't move but also enough of the point back in there so that you're not constantly touching it with your thread. Okay we're going to start by just attaching the thread and then we're going to take this you can either and cut off the tag end and advance the thread down to where we're going to tie the tails. With the curved shrimp hook style to add a little animation look to the fly, it's a little harder to estimate the length of the body. Really when that when it goes from almost flat and starts to curve real hard is about where we're going to tie the tail in. Next we're going to select some uh, off the pheasant tail that's provided. We're going to select and even up those tips nicely. So we'll take and stroke those so they're nice and even and then we're going to clip those off okay, here's the prepared tips nice and even we're going to grasp the tips by the fingers to hold and tie in and if you need to make any adjustment there to the tail length you can just pull just a little bit there that looks good little shorter than the body or about right about you know about half the length of the body from where the, t the tails are hooked tied in and where the bead is by the eye that's about what we're looking at for that tail so we're going to advance it's important to um, build the body in a way that it's uniform it'll add to a properly built fly as well as a um, the proportion as well will look better so we're going to advance up to the front there then we're going to tie in the wire at the front and that's for the same purpose of building in that or building the body that's a uniform nice um, the underbody is nice and uniform so we're going to take that tie it in all the way back to where the tails are tied in and then we're just going to leave our copper there the next step is going to be to select about three to four fibers um, it's not as important as the tips are matched up but it isn't a bad idea to get those matched up we're going to select three or four of those clip them off so we've got our three to four pheasant tail fibers. We're going to tie them in by the tips right where that, right where the um, tails are coming out. Get a couple of soft wraps there. Then we're going to wrap all the way to the front again, building a uniform body. We don't have to go all the way up to the bead because the thorax is going to be just behind the bead. So that's important just to remember you don't have to get that all the way from, but pretty close. So we're going to go ahead and stop our thread there. The next step is to take the um, pheasant tail fibers and you're going to hold them straight up and twist them. If you twist them it creates a little hurl or a little rope that's important for durability. So we'll go ahead and twist those and we're going to make one wrap and then start advancing up the fly. It's one wrap right next to the other. If you do have a hackle plier this is one step that you might want to um, you know, hold on to the hackle pliers. Some people find it difficult to hold on to these. You can every wrap just hold it with your finger to get in before you get that next grasp of the pheasant tail fibers but the hackle plier is a good way to hold those as well. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and tie off the pheasant tail fibers. Nice, you can notice it's nice taper. Some of that's done because you tie it in by the tips and the fibers are actually get fatter as they go up so when you twist them together the rope should gradually get thicker. Um, the next step will be to rib the fly with the copper we've already tied in. Nice uniform, you want to do one wrap right at the tail and then start advancing. Let's keep it nice and uniform. If you have a rotary function, that's something that you can use in this case. Um, but you do have to do a half hitch 
before you uh, um, just behind the bead with your thread before you start doing that or the wraps will undo um, once you're done there you want to hold that wire straight up make a couple nice wraps I usually if you notice I made a couple wraps right there at the end of the body it was segmented then a couple wraps together because those will be covered by the thorax that just adds a little durability to the fly so you make three or four wraps there on the um, wire then to break off the uh, wire it's best some people use um, scissors it's a little better idea um, to go ahead and just rotate that around the wire will cause a uh, weak spot there and a little hook will devo develop when it snaps off there's a little micro hook at the end of the wire and the thread will hold that in and keep the ribbing a little more intact if you do it that way and be a little more durable next step is to take the um, flashback material and we're going to do the loose wrap get that thing to come right up on the top of the back there want it to be coming out right in the top of the hook not on the side or one side or the other we're going to go ahead and wrap that back to about halfway from uh, if you were to take from the eye of the hook to the tails tied in about halfway there and we're going to let that just kind of hang off the back next step is to take and clip off some more pheasant off your sword there about 10 to 12 fibers, a little better chunk than we did for the tails, and tie those in. That'll be our wing case that's underneath the um, flashback, and you want to advance right to the same position where the flashback comes out. You can go ahead and clip and discard these tips that go forward here. All right, and the next step will be to grab the uh, the dubbing included. When it comes to dubbing, the best way to apply dubbing, um, this thread that's supplied is slightly is lightly waxed. You can apply more wax, but um, the most important thing is to go ahead and pull your dubbing out, get it nice and light and airy, so that, that it's not a uh, real dense mass. We'll pull those out, and then you want to just start with even pressure right in the middle of your fingers. To tighten those, the dubbing down, the fingertip pressure is the most important thing. The more you push with just the very tips of your fingers, the tighter that'll get. With this one, we, we don't want it to be super tight, so I'm not going to keep tightening it down. I'm going to keep it a little lighter and airier for the thorax because we want those those fibers to kind of stick out and look like gills. We're going to go ahead and see how it's nice and light there. We're going to start wrapping. It's not, and it doesn't matter if some of those fibers, you can pick those off, the ones that kind of float away. I'm going to apply a little more in the same fashion, a little light and airy. And, and wrap those on. Get Thorax should be fairly, fairly short, top front to back. If you get too long, it doesn't give a nice defined thorax area. Next step is to um, take one of the partridge, brown partridge feathers that's supplied, and prepare that to tie it in a, a um, called a soft hackle style fly or, or um, wing. And what we're going to do is take that, and we're going to take the tips and pull. Hold the very tip, and you can use a hackle plier on this or any other thing. Hold the very tips, stroke it back so you have a place that this is going to be our tie-in area, right where the right the joint there where the the fibers pulled back meet the part part that's not. We're just going to lay that in right on the top, tie it in there. You don't want to do super. You want to do a couple of loose wraps, and then once you've done that, you can you can tighten them up a bit. What that does is it won't make that where the stem is attached fragile. Just going to clip off those, just the front part. So now we have our hackle tied in. And then we're going to fold what's called folding the hackle for the soft hackle. And that is simply you pick this, it straight up, and you're going to stroke those fibers around, back and around the um, stem. So what we're going to do is we're going to stroke it back, and we're going to make a wrap. And then you bring it up again to the top, and then you stroke it back and make another wrap. And that's really with this soft tackle pheasant tail, it's ideal not to have a ton of legs. Um, you'll have more than you need if you just do two wraps. So you go ahead and bring your thread around and wrap that off on the stem. A couple securing wraps and then be careful not to cut your, your legs that you just wrapped and uh, clip it off at the stem. You can go ahead and see the, the hackles facing back, nice tapered back and uh, those will undulate when you fish the pattern and swing it a little bit or even dead drifting. Okay, the next step will be to pull the wing case. You're going to split those soft hackle legs, split it with the uh, wing case, 
make a couple wraps there. One, two, put it, make a wrap in front of that, um, those pheasant tail fibers, and then go ahead and clip those off. And then we're going to pull the flashback over top, and that's just going to kind of go right down the middle of the wing case and make a couple securing wraps there. Clip it off. And the final step um, will be to dub a short little, about a half inch is all we're going to do here, of dubbing. And, and this is going to be a little tighter than we had on the um, thorax. We're going to go ahead and t get it pretty tightened down with your fingertips, as we discussed. If you want to tighten it down, just get it real tight right with the very tips of your fingers. You can slide that a little closer. And what that's going to do is these couple wraps are just going to serve to protect our thread when we tie it off. They're going to kind of be a, just a protection there. There are a lot of ways to finish a fly um, with whip finish tools of various styles. And if you have one of those, um, getting familiar with that is what a lot of people prefer. One way we wanted to cover in the um, on the Allen Brothers video series here is what's just the hand half hitch. Um, and you can do a series of those instead of a whip finish, and it does a real durable um, real durable finish knot. So basically you take your two fingers and you bring them up on the from behind and we're going to take that and we're going to wrap right around, we're going to take the fingers into both and it's going to go around our the thread will go travel around our both fingers and you're going to create a diamond or a little triangle there. Right angle with the thread. Take that up to the front and bring it over the top. Every time you do this you're going to have to spin your fingers though so you're alternating. This one comes up with my uh, pointer finger, bring it around, and that's going to do the same thing another with my pointer finger again here. Then you want to just keep that tight with your middle finger, pop it off, insert a, either a dubbing needle or, or some kind of um, bodkin or a scissor tip and then just pull with your thread, bobbin thread, and um, just tighten that down and there you go. It's important with the little dubbed portion there at the end behind the bead, just go ahead and pull tight with your thread, wiggle it a little bit, make sure that seat's back in there. What it does is the thread will get behind the dubbing and kind of pull it into that, that concave space behind the bead so the bead won't want to slide much. And then once you've really tightened down that half hitch, you can clip it off. And there's the finished fly.